Hello and welcome to this video on common mistakes when reporting the results of structural equation modeling and factor analysis and how to avoid them. My name is Christian Geiser. I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. On Tuesdays I usually talk about an analysis in the M plus software and on Thursday I address more general issues in multivariate statistical analysis including structural equation modeling, factor analysis, latent class analysis and multi-level modeling. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter, as well as links to free workshops that I offer through Quantfish. In this video, I want to address some frequent mistakes that I see in articles um, that report the results of structural equation modeling analyses and factor models and other um, analyses with latent variables. And some of these mistakes even occur in analyses that don't involve latent variables such as regression and path analysis, for example. So I hope you find this useful for your own work and as you learn how, what should be included in a report of analyses with latent variables. So let's start with um, the methods section. So say what are things that I frequently see in a methods section that I don't like or that I think that should be improved. And so one um, aspect is that oftentimes it is unclear how missing data were handled and even it's unclear whether there were any missing data. Typically when we um, conduct studies cross-sectional or longitudinal there will be at least some missing data so some people will not respond to certain items or over time people will drop out and so it is absolutely critical that you let the readers know whether there were missing data first of all and then how they were addressed because that can make a large difference for the analysis whether missing data were handled properly for example by using full information maximum likelihood or multiple imputation or whether they were handled with methods that we would now see as less appropriate such as for example listwise deletion and I have more videos on this channel that specifically address the issue of missing data if you're interested in that then feel free to check out those other quantfish videos on missing data so that's an important point and then also what is important is that you describe your observed variables and items that were used in um, enough detail so that people can understand what items did you use? What were the variables that were used in your structural equation or factor model? What were the indicators? Where can I find more information on the item wording and how they were combined into scales, for example, or whether the analysis were, the analyses were conducted at the item level and so on. So that's important. And then also uh, what is important is to let people know about your sample, obviously. So sometimes um, there will be a lack of information about what, how the sample was drawn and how many people were included in the sample. So that is, of course, very critical to know the sample size, the composition of the sample, the representativeness of the sample for a given population or or whether it was a convenient sample, whether it was a clustered sample, whether it was stratification, and so on. So a lot of details on the sample should be included in the method section. And then also in the method section, you wanna let your uh, readers know what exactly your model or models that you fit to the data looked like. So were there, uh, what was the structure of the model? What were the parameters that were freely estimated in the model? What were constraints maybe that were imposed on factor loadings or something else in the model? So, and were there competing models? What did these different models look like? How many parameters, degrees of freedom, etc., did they have so that your model or models are transparent and can be reproduced by others with other data sets. Otherwise, it wouldn't be clear when other people try to replicate your analyses, maybe in a different population, whether they actually fit the same model or models that you fit. So that's very important to be clear and transparent about your model specification. Sometimes only a path diagram is shown, but then from the path diagram, it's not clear what constraints may or may not have been in the model that are not obvious. And so it's very important to be clear about the description of your structural equation or factor model that you actually fit to your data. 
And then as we move to the um, results section, then oftentimes I find that there's missing or incomplete information with regard to model fit information, model fit statistics. Sometimes people will, for example, not report a chi-square test of model fit, which would be the most critical information regarding model fit um, to know about. They will only report um, descriptive fit statistics, such as maybe, for example, an RMSEA coefficient or a CFI coefficient. And then also related to that, oftentimes um, people will claim that the model or models fit the data well based on simply descriptive fit, fit statistics. And that is something that can be highly problematic because oftentimes descriptive or approximate fit statistics will make your model look good or make your model look okay even though there may be a highly significant chi-square value indicating model misfit and so therefore it is important to also report the model chi-square for fit assessment its degrees of freedom and p-value and then if the chi-square value is large and significant then you should also comment on potential sources of misfit so you should um, investigate if if this is the case you should investigate why did the model produce a large chi-square were there any large model covariance residuals were there any covariances that were not well explained by your model not well reproduced and so what could be sources of misfit so a discussion of fit and misfit is often very sparse people are very willing to quickly claim that a model fits the data well even this even if this is questionable and so the problem is when you have a not well fitting model that some or all of your parameter estimates in your model may be biased and may not be interpretable or may lead you to incorrect conclusions and therefore it is important to carefully assess model fit and talk about model misfit also and how it may be addressed or was addressed um, in the study. And then as we move to the um, report of parameter estimates from a given model, then oftentimes what I see is that parameter estimates are not completely reported. So there will be some parameters that will be given, but not all. Maybe um, uh, some factor loadings will be given and some other parameters but not factor variances for example and so when the report is incomplete with regard to the parameter estimates then again that um, reduces the transparency of the study and then also makes it harder for people who maybe later want to aggregate results in a meta-analysis combining the results from different studies into one big analysis. It, it would be hard for them to extract all the relevant information that they may need for a meta-analytic aggregation of the information. So therefore, it's very important to report all parameter estimates from your model, meaning not just factor loadings, not just standardized parameter estimates, but also unstandardized parameter estimates, factor variances, residual variances, and covariances and other parameters that are part of the model. If there's not enough space in your paper to report all those, then you can always create an appendix or make um, online supplemental materials and post them um, as supplemental materials so that individuals can access all the information. Also part of the parameter estimates should be their standard errors. So you should include standard errors in the table so that people can also see how precise those parameter estimates were so that they can um, compute confidence intervals if you don't already include those confidence intervals in your report. So that's also an, an important point that is often lacking from an analysis of struct or a report of structural equation and factor models is the standard errors. And then also include effect size measures with your um, report, such as, for example, R-squared values, correlations, latent um, effect size parameters, such as Cohen's D, for example, for mean differences across groups or across time, so that individuals not only know whether parameters are statistically significant, but also so that they can see whether results are practically meaningful. And this is something that applies not just to structural equation modeling analyses, but to all statistical analyses that involve comparisons or other tests of significance across groups or something like that, where we want to also know about the magnitude of the effect and not just whether it was statistically significant. And then related to this point about parameter estimates, it's 
often unclear from reports when um, people only report parameter estimates in a path diagram. Um, it remains unclear sometimes whether the parameters are standardized or unstandardized. And so then um, it's very difficult to interpret the results if it's not clear whether you have standardized or unstandardized parameter estimates. And there are pros and cons or there are information in there's information in both that may or may not be relevant and so there's no general rule as to whether you should report standardized or unstandardized parameters i would always say it's a good idea to report both of them so that then again this makes your report more complete and then in your interpretation of the results in the text you can focus on those that are most relevant to your um, conclusions or research questions. So make clear, always make clear what are you talking about, standardized or unstandardized parameter estimates. And then also sometimes um, a lot of parameters are reported, a lot of results, but there's no clear interpretation of the parameters in the discussion section and there's no clear explanation as to what the results really mean and so make sure that you explain in your report what did i find what does this mean what these what does what do these coefficients etc indicate and what conclusions do you draw from your model at the end it's nice to fit a model and to get results but then also we want to know what does this mean and what conclusions do we draw from that. I hope that this presentation was helpful for you in learning about certain common mistakes that um, I often see in reports of structural equation models and factor models. If you did, then please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to check out the description for additional free resources. And I'll see you next time.